Welcome to Broke Joe Builds, and we're back on this Dirty C30. Last time I left you, we had a, a weird noise coming from the engine compartment, and we couldn't really figure out exactly what it was. I thought it was power steering, and maybe transmission. Well, after closing the video, I looked under the car, and I could see that was leaking transmission fluid, and we had a busted line. So, in this video, we're gonna try to fix that line, we're going to do a quick transmission service. We're going to change the filter and see if that solves our issue. So, without further ado. So right now we're going to crawl real quick under the truck and see if we could spot where this leak is coming from. And... If you can see it right here. Well, that, that's the leak. It just seems like the the line has some scale and rust. And it's probably the original lines to the car. So we're gonna do a quick repair and replace it with some rubber holes and see if we could uh stop this leak. Eventually we're gonna add a transmission cooler. So it'd be a good spot to see, you know, we could add the cooler from there later on. Okay, so depending on how the lines look in the future, I may uh, replace them. Uh, they're a little iffy, but for right now, we just want to make sure that the major problem, the whining that's coming from the transmission, is not, you know, the transmission pump going bad and if that's the case then I will have to you know drop the transmission and we'll have to rebuild it but if we just change the filter you know and fits the the error that's probably getting into the system that may uh, get rid of the wind so we're here let's separate the line some so I can find a good spot to reach in there and cut it. Alright. So I'm just going to be using your typical uh, pipe cutter. Find a spot where the line is more solid.
got our lines cut. It seems we have decent metal on the ends that we're trying to connect to. So now we'll get our holes. Now we get our holes. I got some good USA made multi fuel holes. between the hoses and the center link. On to the transmission next. All right, well, welcome back. You guys won't really notice, but it's actually been a few days since uh, the previous recording of when I was uh, fitting the line. It's actually gonna be about a little over a week and a half uh, I got caught out in the rain and I had to stop what we we're doing. So, continuing from where we were at before, I'm going to drop the pan and see what the inside of the pan looks like and see what some of the oil looks like as well. Um, luckily, this, this pan has a drain plug, so what we're going to do here is just, well, quite simply, drain some oil. And then, we'll drop the pan to change the filter nets. So, first glance, we have a little, some, little stuff inside the, the magnet. Doesn't really smell burnt or anything, looks, looks somewhat normal. And the oil itself doesn't seem too bad. Let's see, I got some little grind. Let me get time to wipe my hands up real quick as this drains. Stains, nope, half inch. Alright. And... I'm going to proceed to do this with hand tools. I do have air tools, but I'll do it by hand, you know, just to show that something like this can be done 
with just basic hand tools at home. You know, you don't need a full fledged shop. to get things going in your project. We got still a little bit of oil left in the pan, which is okay. We'll dump it out under some daylight and see how the pan looks. Let me see if we could uh, bring you guys along for the ride here. gonna look at the bottom of the pan see what sediment now we definitely you reach down here got some clutch material for sure in the bottom of the pan but again this is a transmission that has some miles on it and for the most part you know it doesn't look the very best but I think we still have some life left in this transmission So, what I'm going to use to clean this is this product that you can get at a dollar store. Totally awesome. Again, not sponsored by them or whatever, but I love this stuff. I use it to clean almost anything and everything uh, around the shop. So, I'll just spray it down and I'll bring it to the, the water holes. Normally you use like brake cleaner, also you use brake cleaner, carburetor cleaner. But I like this stuff because it's not as volatile. You know, it doesn't feel like it's going to kill you. That's quick. That's saying that it won't kill you. But it doesn't feel like it's going to kill you. It doesn't burn your lungs as bad. And um, Again, I still use brake clean and stuff like that. But you get a lot more of this and it seems to go a long ways. As long as you have running water. Now, if you don't have running water uh, near your area or near you, then, of course, brake clean and uh, carburetor cleaner will do in a pinch. I'll be right back with this. Okay. So, since we were gone, some elbow grease and some totally awesome. This is the end result. Again, not perfect, but it's clean. And it's a good uh, base to start off from. So, what I like to do, take it clean, one more last pass through, and we'll get the new gasket. And we have to get the pattern here. So, I myself am not a fan of this gasket. This is a 
just a replacement gasket from uh, AutoZone here. One of their Dur Duralast filter kits. So what we're going to do is use a little bit of uh, black RTV. And we're not going to go crazy. We're just going to put in some corners to help hold this gasket in place. There you go. And one quick thing. If you can see in this pan, somebody did a little awesome little job here. They welded a, a nut and they put a drain. This pan originally didn't have a drain in it. And they put a drain. So that could be a little tech tip that you could do for yourself. So if you have a transmission pan that doesn't have a drain, put one in it. If you know how to weld, well, you like you do something the way this gentleman might have done here and it will be easier to do services in the future so let's uh, move the camera back under the car and we'll change the filter from the transmission all right from this point we'll uh, Drop the filter. It's also half inch drive. This is a deep pan. So it's a little extension housing that comes out a little further out. So this bolt should have a spacer behind it. Oh, we got some leakage and the spacer almost fell, but right here. So that's a spacer. And this will be your your bolt. And this should just pop right out here. Alright. So from over here, you get a different approach. And this tube just pulled out. And if you see, I didn't see the O-ring here. But don't panic. Sometimes the rubber O-ring gets stuck in the tube. Uh, it gets stuck inside the transmission. So take a quick peek in here. And you can see that the O-ring is right here. But, I see another problem. Somebody forgot the O-ring before and they put two O-rings back to back. So very well be that our issue may have came from having two O-rings. Sometimes more is not better. 
Our filter kit did come with an o ring, so we'll put an o ring back in the tube and uh, we'll push it back in there and hopefully we we'll solve this problem. So, we get the tube. We'll wipe the tube down, make sure the inside is clean. We'll slide the O-ring in place. And now, we'll just slide her home. Push it all the way to feel it bottom out. And right here we're good. Clean the end of this. We'll take our new filter and our spacer. Keep the spacer in your hand. And slide the bolt through. Slide the spacer over. Again, if you're working on the Ford or a Dodge, for the most part, all this stuff is going to be pretty close to being the same. up it's okay it's not gonna be super mega tight you're gonna have some give you know what it's a little loose for my liking let's see if I get another washer we'll stack another washer here and uh, make it a little bit more tighter so there's not as much play. I'll be right back. Okay, so I found another washer. This is uh, a he an extra head bolt washer, but it's a little bit thicker, and I think it's gonna work perfect. Again, if you had to double it up or whatnot, you just want enough to take up enough space so you're not just flapping in the breeze. You don't want to over tighten it. I put the hand torque down to uh, uh, 10 foot pounds. And if you see that little extra washer, definitely helped keep this from being a flappy mess. I'm get a hand rag. I'm gonna wipe around the transmission. And any area that is going to seal, you don't want anything to disrupt this sealing surface. 
other than that, everything looks good. Let's get the transmission pan back in here and we start zipping her in. So make sure you have the pan going the right way. Let's set it up in place. Put some of these screws in by hand. So, last but not least, we want to add some fluid. When we turn it down, turn it on. When we turn it on, This fluid level will go down, so hopefully this will be just enough to get the job done. Alright, so I still definitely going to need to get one or two quarts more. But let's turn it on and see if we get any annoying whining sounds. Definitely had to go buy maybe one more quart of oil. But if you listen in here in the video, yeah, 
Now we definitely gonna need some more oil. But you do this. If you listen and compare it to the last video, you're not gonna hear any whining sounds. No crazy whining. So again, we definitely are low on oil, but I think uh, with a couple more quarts of oil will be good. We're no longer sucking any air, and uh, I think this transmission is going to be just fine. There'll be no reason to drop this transmission right now. Well, unless when we take it for a test ride, we see major slipping. But from speaking with the owner, he had no slipping issues whatsoever. Just had a had a little bit of a whine. So with that being said, I think I'll end this video here. And the next thing to do is go, we're gonna fix a brake line in the back. And after that, be ready to take this on its maiden voyage. And we'll take it for a quick ride and see if we could to see if there's any other major things that are wrong with it. And I think while we're there. We're going to change this basset cylinder. I think there might be something a little funky in there. Then again, this is Broke Joe Builds. Thanks for watching. Be blessed.